Hey everyone and welcome to the Your Was, the podcast all about today that gives you just enough information to effectively be that guy at the party causing all your friends to question. Hey, who invited you? Like, seriously, why are you here? I'm your host Michael Montalvo and for the next few minutes we will swim through the river of time to try and find out what makes today truly unique. In this episode we examine the events that occurred February 16th. Fun fact... There are not a lot of topics for February 16th, at least, none that I could find. In 1600, Pope Gregory said saying God bless you is the appropriate response to a sneeze. In 1659, the first known check was written and is now on display in Westminster Abbey. In 1741, Ben Franklin began publishing his general publication magazine. In 1861, Abraham Lincoln stopped his train at... Westfield on his way to Washington to thank 11-year-old Grace Bettle in person for her advice to grow a beard to gain more votes. And in 1909, the first subway car with side doors went into service in New York. The list goes on, and so with topics like that, what could possibly be the subject of today's episode? In truth, even as I write this, I don't know. I just found a topic. Let's start with Edward L. Doney. Doney was born 1856 in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. I'm going to skip ahead in his life a bit because this part is insane, but he spent 20 years wandering Mexico in the American Southwest working as a mule driver, a gold miner, a fruit packer, a singing waiter, and a gunslinger. Also, allegedly, he was a pimp and he killed a man in Laredo, Texas. No word on if he went to Folsom. All of this was over the course of 20 years, but then he started digging. According to the West Adams Heritage website, he used a sharpened tree trunk as a drill, and after 200 feet, he struck oil. After selling the oil, he raised money to buy more land in the Los Angeles area, and then, in 1893, his son Edward Doney Jr. was born. That bit will be important in a moment. So Doney was so engorged with the Texas tea that his only rival was John D. Rockefeller, an American oil man who is often considered the wealthiest American of all time. By this time in his life, Doney had had two kids, the first a daughter who passed away at seven, and a son, Edward Doney Jr., who went by Ned, who would go on to marry Lucy Smith in 1926. As a wedding gift, the elder Doney gave his son a parcel of land, approximately 12.58 acres. And with this land, Ned used it to construct a mansion, which would be his family home. Construction on Greystone Mansion began February 15, 1927, and while Ned, Lucy, and their five children moved in September of 1928, it would take a total of three years and over $3 million to finally complete the mansion and its surrounding structures. Three years being from the purchase of the land in 1926 to the move-in year of 1928. The mansion included a stable, kennels, tennis courts, fire station, gatehouse, swimming pool, pavilion, lake, babbling brooks, and even cascading waterfalls. And all of this is in addition to the mansion itself, which was designed by the same guy who designed the Hoover Dam and the LA Times building, Gordon Kaufman. The home itself had 55 rooms and was 46,000 square feet. It's said to have cost $1.24 million, and remember this is during the 1920s, that's $20.3 million in today's money. So the family moved in, but all was not well. Doney had been implicated in the Teapot Dome scandal. Teapot Dome will need its own episode, but the basics of it are that government officials conspired with and accepted bribes from oil tycoons in exchange for exclusive drilling rights on federal land. Also, allegedly, these tycoons bought the presidency for Warren G. Harding. So, there's a lot going on there. All of this brings us to... The year was 1929, and on this day, February 16th, Edward Ned Doney Jr. was shot and killed in his home by longtime friend and secretary Hugh Plunkett in an apparent murder-suicide. Here's what we know. 
According to Ned's wife Lucy, Pluckett, Ned's secretary, let himself into the house with his own key and made his way to the east wing. While he was in there, Lucy, who was in another part of the house, didn't think anything of it until she heard a gunshot. She then called the family doctor, one Ernest Clyde Fishbaugh, waited for him to arrive, and then the two of them went towards where the sound came from. Once outside the room, they found Pluckett holding a gun and looking distressed. He rushed back into the bedroom, and it was then that another shot was fired. Lucy and the doctor went inside the room, and upon doing so, found the bodies of both men. Here's where things get a little bit fuzzy. Dr. Fishbaugh was a bit inconsistent with his testimony. First, he claimed the door was softly shut, but later claimed it had been slammed, jammed, and thank you, ma'am, shut. Remember when I said the doctor was called first? Well, the police weren't called until three hours after the first shot. When they did arrive, they interviewed the house's staff and felt that the testimonies given were a little bit rehearsed. When examining the room, they found evidence that both men had been drinking. Ned was laying on his back in his underwear and a silk robe, but the gunshot wound was in the back of his head. Plunkett was laying face down on his stomach spread eagle, with a pool of blood beneath his face indicating that he had been shot from behind. An unfinished cigarette was under his fingers and had burned his left hand. The gun was underneath his body. Lucy and Dr. Fishball would later admit that the bodies had been moved prior to police arrival in an attempt to revive the two men. Powder burns from the gun were present on Ned's head. However, none were present on Plunkett's body, suggesting that Plunkett had not killed himself. After two days, police officially ruled it a murder-suicide and shut the book on the case. Lucy would go on to remarry, and Doney never had to testify to his involvement in the Teapot Dome scandal. So, what happened? And, more importantly, why did it happen? We don't know. And we may never know. But, of course, there are some theories about why it did happen. The bribe that Doney had made to Secretary of the Interior Albert Fall during the Teapot Dome scandal had been delivered by Ned and Plunkett. With Doney's upcoming fraud trial, some say that the two were murdered as a way to keep them from testifying against Ned's father, allowing him to escape without punishment, some say. Stories suggest that Plunkett was acting erratic and the idea of him being institutionalized until he felt better was floated around. This, of course, painted him in a way that he could snap and potentially commit this murder. Another theory is that the two men were lovers, and were having a fight about their relationship, but there isn't really much evidence to support that. In 1955, Lucy sold the house and had a smaller one built, and the city of Beverly Hills purchased it and turned it into a park and venue for events, as well as a set for films. Speaking of films, nice segue, The Elder Doney was supposedly the inspiration for Daniel Plainview, the main character played by Daniel Day-Lewis, in There Will Be Blood, and you have probably seen the house in music videos as well. Meatloaf, R.I.P., would use it in his video, I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. Today the mansion sits where it did in the 1920s. That's because houses can't walk, unless you're the Baba Yaga. It is said to be haunted, as some visitors have claimed to have seen a man in a black suit, while others claim to see the ghost of Lucy. That's going to do it for us today. If you like this podcast and want to hear more, give us a rate and a review. That helps me out and helps share this in a direction that is hopefully good for all. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can find the Year Was audio version on your podcast app of choice. You can find me on social media and at YouTube at the Apple Cider Club. And as always, I want to thank the Tim Kreitz Band for our musical theme. And thank you for listening. We'll see you next time.